Hey, 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 everyone. Hi. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back to the weekly SEO. I want to introduce you to the weekly SEO. Actually, our goal uh, with these live sessions is to keep you updated in the SEO industry. Um, we experienced a lot of things in SEO. Uh, we have uh, expertise on technical, on content, and etc. things. And not just about SEO, but actually about content marketing. Bisha, for example, is really great about that. She's a content queen, and <laughs> we have a lot of things to share with you today. Adam is going to share with you a lot of things about Core Web Vitals, which is part of Page Experience Algorithm Update. So we do really uh, are excited about these weekly issues because we we are uh, non-native English speakers, none of us. For example, I am Russian Romanian guy. Dusha and Adam is Turkish. So we we do. Uh, our best to share our expertise, our experiences with you. And that's the only way that we can communicate with you. And like I said, we share here SEO news, SEO tips and tricks, and some experiences about SEO. So if you have questions, you can drop them in the chat box, or we have a type form where you can ask your any questions in there about SEO, mostly SEO, uh, if it's OK. But we don't do PR, but you can ask us about PR. So we can give you like examples. We can give you like great uh, resources about that, because there is a lot of people which sharing amazing things, not just about SEO. So we also share them right here. And lastly, I want to inform you that we have a landing page regarding the weekly SEO. So if you have also uh, some questions, you can drop them there. And if you want to subscribe to our newsletter, there is also an option for that. Hello, Kubra. Welcome to the weekly SEO. Do you guys have anything to add before starting? I'm so happy. I put on my makeup. It's a reason to <laughs> wear makeup for me. I'm, I feel really pretty right now. And I have a really good orange blouse. Don't worry, I, I won't get up and dance. I won't do that. <laughs> but you I'm happy. Do that enough style. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> 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 okay. So I I think we can start. People are coming. We are more than ten people right now. Oh, that's great. That's a wow, well, our best record, right? <laughs> so um, again, my name is Roman uh, Adamita, but in my language, it's a little bit different. I am director of SEO at Bustras. As a director of SEO, I am leading and encouraging the SEO team. I am working with some projects uh, where I um, solve some complex issues. I am working on strategies and mostly on technical SEO. So that's me. And hi, everyone. I'm Bishra. I'm working as a senior SEO specialist at Bootstrap. Bootstrap. Oh, oh, my god. It's, I'm so excited. I can't even put my excitement in the sentences right now. So it's been all the almost a year, I guess, we are working together. And you may know me from my YouTube videos on content marketing and, or my blog posts. You're welcome to read them if you don't see them, if you haven't seen them. Hello, everyone. I'm Adam, and uh, I am at Bootstrap as a SEO associate. And uh, if you are waiting for my joke, you know, that's uh, the first digital marketing blood, uh, I won't do it. Just uh, I'm here again for uh, my good presentation and uh, good updates of SEOs. Yeah, you fresh blood of marketing. <laughs> um, Shaheen asked us uh, where he can 
uh, get to presentation or our video. So I forget to mention that this presentation, the deck, uh, which we will speak, uh, which we will cover something in, in here, we will share that presentation uh, after the live stream uh, below in the description section. So you can also see that later. Okay, so what we will cover today in this uh, really, I have to say, I don't know, I don't have any like word for that, but it will be a little bit firing. <laughs> <laughs> Ten things about, about canonicalization, like a movie title. No spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone has seen this already. <laughs> okay, so we have Atakan. Hi, Atakan. We have Marina. Hello, Marina. We have Sumer. Hi, Sumer. Hey, everybody. Everyone. So today I will cover mostly my uh, latest blog post regarding impact of canonicalization pagination pages to the first page, which is really not recommended at all uh, by Google, by SEO community, etc. Uh, so how it started, uh, the damage, how it's ended and how it's continu continue behind the scene, uh, clarification about uh, that thing about the canonicalization, what were the results and what was my goal, my purpose for that, uh, what also can be good practice for pagination. I will share with you uh, another one because there's a lot of good practices, but I find uh, one which is with results. Uh, so I will share that with you. And I will talk about Women in Tech SEO Virtual, what are the best practices for compet competitor keyword analysis. Google may see pages as duplicate if URLs too similar. SEO for journalists. Domains lose visibility in mobile search. SERP feature on mobile and desktop. And I will cover up uh, the pyramid or flat navigate structure. Any plan to speed up core web vitals data? This is uh, two issues like topics from Google Office Hours from uh, John Mueller. And uh, I have also this experience. I will talk about that hero image, image for mobile site and uh, page speed insights, uh, API for Screaming Frog. And uh, I, I made a research about the news and media websites, CLS performance. Wow, so quickly, guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we are so fast. <laughs> It's a little bit advanced level, but we will try to simplify complex things like we uh, always do. So let me start with the blog post, which I shared. Um, you throw a snowball and it turned into an avalanche this week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how it started after I published the blog post. Sunday, it happened on Sunday. Mm, last week, I shared that on Twitter and someone started to retweet that, to like that, and I saw a latest retweet. And then in the morning when I wake up, I saw myself in this week SEO Epsomnes uh, with SEO FOMO. <laughs> and I say, <laughs> oh, it's coming, it's coming something. <laughs> and it's really happened, and I'm really grateful for that. Thank you very much, Aleda, uh, from here too. Um, my blog post uh, was included there. And how it ended after the SEO FOMO and Twitter shares, it actually also happened um, in just three four, or four hours. And then lots of people started to share that on Twitter, started to share their, their um, ideas on that, their methods, etc. But it's not just the end because it still continue. There is still um, damages, there is still positive 
feedback, negative feedback, but it's okay. Uh, also, it was in the top five of Sparktor just for some minutes, for a few minutes, but then uh, it was down a little bit, but I got a little, uh, a little bit attention. And after that, some backlinks. Like I said, we are not PR specialists. We don't <laughs> know, like, really. We are specialized in PR uh, or something like that. But um, this blog post got a lot of attention, a lot of backlinks and shares. But behind the scene, uh, we have lots of thoughts about that. Mm. I wanted to share with you some of them, which was shared publicly. And I want to say it's OK, like I said in the beginning of the weekly SEO, because there is lots of methods that you can do with your pagination pages, uh, which I will share with you in some minutes. Um, so. That's behind the scenes. There's lots of negatives, uh, tweets, shares, but uh, of course there's positive feedbacks about that. So let me go through all I wanna say about uh, this situation. I have an explanation about that and I really want to say you that I'm thank you for that uh, just quickly. So there is a quote from uh, Image Dragons. Just because it isn't easy doesn't mean that it is wrong. Everything that we've, we have been working on, working on so long. So if you will click this link after this uh, weekly SEO, you, you will see there uh, over 20 minutes explanation about the situation, about the damage, uh, about the misunderstandings, and lots of them, etc. So I will start in a bit. Is there any questions uh, besides everything here? No, but you can ask anything. You are free to ask any questions to us, guys. Yep. So what? Uh, so what is uh, this all about? It's about canonicalizing pagination pages to the first page. I know it's not recommended by Google. I know it's go against grid lines. And I, I know it's there are some rules. But like Cyrus said in his tweet, I really like to go out of the box because I know there is some good lines, but I, I'm really passionate about test it and get results. So before this project, I actually implemented the same thing on the biggest supermarket in Turkey. And if you will check the, this blog post, you will see there a case study regarding that. So it's not my first time when I tried this. It's not my first time when I'm going against Google, but actually I am not going against Google. I'm just trying something to get results. And the results like is my goal uh, goal here is to see if google crawl that product pages because uh on the pagination pages which i canonicalize it to the first page for example on the second page there is some products right so i am wondering that uh, google will not crawl or people uh, are wondering and don't recommend actually that just because products will not be discovered by a Google bot. So my goal was in the in the blog post was to uh, be sure if there is uh, if if Google will crawl that um, product pages. I know that pagination pages in most of cases are not duplicate with the first page. I know about that. I know about the situation and I just trying to know if Google will crawl that product pages. So I got the results. I have um, real data from directly from server side. And 
why do I choose canonicalizing? By the way, I don't recommend to all of uh, to all of you to uh, to do that in your website. Uh, yeah, it's a bit challenging. Mm, it's risky because if you don't know what you do with your website, uh, you might lose or you might win. You need to try that. But uh, I don't recommend to all websites to do the same thing. Uh, that was a uh, first misunderstanding about this situation. Um, in that situation, in Carrefour project, I do canonicalizing to the first page because it was risky to do no index. It was risky to do like RoboStix CD solo. And like I said in my explanation video on loom.com, RoboStix rules, disallow rules, is just to not crawl that pages. Because if they are linked internally or if they have backlinks, then Google will, uh, will crawl it again because there is links and will keep in the index as much as possible. And I choose canonicalizing because this pagination pages has in the last uh, 12 months has over 4 million impressions from Google. So in December 2020, <clears throat> um, we implemented can canonical tag to the first page and the graph started to down uh, really like, like expect we expected. So uh, my purpose my goal is not to like have a, a really big impact on organic search my goal here is to know uh if google will uh, crawl that pages and my goal is to save a little bit from crawl budget um crawl discovery internal links and etc things are yeah are signals for Google, but if we uh, still index these pagination pages, in my opinion, Google will uh, waste time in that pages because like I said in my blog post, uh, Google will never will show a, a really little, um, it's not possible actually to show the pagination pages to the uh, first to the top 10 results on Google search uh, because you have your first category. So users, users, user intent is to find your first category because there is your product. So second page is after user will enter your website. Um, so after the implementation, impressions started to uh, down. So what were the results after this implementation? I wanted to be sure if Google will crawl that product pages. And as the results, I analyzed it on Screaming Frog. I saw that product pages is still crawling after this implementation. And this results is actually uh, for February, uh, last week of February, I think, and two days of Mo uh, March. So as you can see right here, I imported uh, all products and I wanted to match them with the log analysis. And I saw that uh, almost all the products was crawled by Googlebot. Uh, why almost, why not uh, all of them? It's because it's just one week and Google will not crawl all, all their website in just one day or one week or even in one month. So you, if you have a large website, you need to know that Google will not crawl all your pages in just one day, one week, one week or one month. It depends. Uh, on your, like you have traffic, you have internal links, you have top menu, footer menu, uh, you have sitemap, et cetera. So have Google find that product pages because they are like in pages that it's not crawling, right? So 
as I mentioned in my blog post, Google find that pages because they are linked internally. They are relevant products, products with another products. They are actually included in sitemap. They have backlinks. Google already know that products because it, it crawled it before. So Googlebot know that pages about all the pages. So like I said in the beginning, I'm um, I'm not recommend to all of you. And in my explanation video, also I gave you one idea what you can do with small, medium businesses with your websites. You can do a lot of things. Like um, my recommendation there was like change your meta title on second page. Change your meta description in the second page, third or later pages. So in that way, you will have, there is already UniQ products, right? But you don't have a UniQ page title or page description, meta description. So if you will change your page title, meta title and meta description, then it's pretty probably that your pagination pages uh, if they are uh, indexable, will appear in the Google search. It depends what kind of category you have. It depends how many uh, internal links they have, where they are linked, etc. things. So I will not go deeply into that, but uh, I'm not saying about include like after coffee cup, page two, page three, page four, etc. I am saying that if you have coffee cups, or for example, if you have their iPhone category, iPhone 8, for example, you have iPhone 8 in the first page of the category. Okay, your page title is iPhone 8. In the second page, you can write there uh, in the meta title, iPhone 8 prices. In third page, you can uh, write iPhone 8 price, the best iPhone 8 prices or red color iPhone 8 prices. So in that way, you will have um, long tails in your page uh, titles. You will, uh, you have um, like, it's an insight, but you will have more impressions uh, for that kind of pages. And I will test that again, because it's a, a little bit old case study. And I didn't share that. I didn't have a chance to share that. Uh, so it's just one of my method I used. But like I said, there is a lot of good practices. I am not judging anybody. And I want to say that in my opinion, before judging anybody, you need to know the reality. What is the reality there? You don't need to be like aggressive or like something like that. You need to know the answer. My direct messages is open. You always can write me or emailing me about the that case if you uh, have some questions about that uh, i had lots of questions by the way in uh, direct messages also publicly so i answered a lot of lots of them this week so that's why it was really busy a damage week firing week <laughs> <laughs> I meet a lot of amazing people from the industry, like Oliver, Patrick, and lots of them. So um, let me go to the one good practice that I found uh, on uh, Twitter in Lily Race. As for twi tweets, there was uh, lots of tweets, and lots of questions in there. And I found this from uh, Odisto, and they shared a method, which is really, for me, it's good. It's a good practice because, why it's a good practice for me? Because I, I see there are tests, they tested it, they have results. So this pagination page structure is mostly for design. For example, in Carrefour, in Carrefour case, it's a different pagination page structure. 
but this one is different. So lots of e-commerce websites has different uh, pagination pages buttons. So it's mostly uh, about your user interface, your design, uh, how you designed it uh, in that way, you will uh, make the structure for that. So in my case, I didn't have that one, but it's a really great idea to make that because um, that kind of pagination will be crawled uh, always and it's not really depth from, it's not uh, a lot of depth from the home page. So um, the deep your pages, uh, the most probably that page will not be visible uh, on Google because it's like four, five, six, seven, etc. page, then Google will treat like uh, it's not a, um, I would say that, valuable uh, page. So in that case, you need to make your structure really well. So in, in my case, I can't do that. I can't uh, request to redesign that uh, page nation pages because uh, it's a really very, very long time to do that because you make that in your all website. But to, I wanted to test it again and I got the results that I wanted to. Uh, so some people think that I'm going uh, Google guidelines, but it's not the case. Uh, the case is to find out if Google will find that product pages. So uh, you can, um, if you have a design team, you can uh, request from them this pagination page structure. Uh, and lastly, what I want to say, it's a quote from Isaac Nav Isaac. Isaac Newton, what you know, it's a drop, but what you don't know, it's an ocean. <laughs> so please, exactly. um, please, uh, before judging anybody, just trying to ask, try to understand what, what was the goal of that. Uh, I know some of you uh, guys wanted to protect some practices which you shared which is recommended by Google, okay. Um, but to know the reality, what is the reality, you need to test that, right? So that's why uh, we are SEOs. By the way, um, when I, I saw that tweet on Twitter, I just wanted to share your amazing, you have an actually amazing video on pagination practices and you're talking about this in detail, but unfortunately it was Turkish I couldn't share it with people. And you're saying that, okay, this is a, this is just a method I'm trying and testing, but there are also me other methods. You can do this, you can do that. You just, if I don't remember wrong, you were sharing three or two or three different methods in there. One of them is this, because you are testing it. And I don't know, um, we don't have to play by the rules all the time. And pagination, in case of big, very big, very large websites like your example, there are hundreds, hundreds of paginated pages. Sometimes, it's not the case. It's not the case that the changing the meta titles or meta descriptions are not the case. You can't do that, and they won't share a budget about it. So we are trying to be creative, and we are trying. Yeah, and, and I'm talking about you, by the way. We're think we are trying to think out of the box, and. Yeah. SEO is not a, I, I don't think SEO is a, has a really good and strict rule book. It's open to interpretation. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. that's, I, uh, that's it I want to share with you. But uh, then you were saying something, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really. Uh... I, I want to say, like, uh, you know, SEOs is like you are trying something. Is it okay or not? Like, just uh, you, you. If you want to know it, you need to try it. So uh, that's that's just uh, insightful. A blog post, like uh, uh, Google can find my uh, pagination pages, like my products. If I uh, if I how can I say it like canonicalize the the main page. So. 
just like a test and uh, you just prove it that's all it's not like uh, okay guys like uh, let's do it that's really uh, increase your traffic or impression that's not just uh, just you test it and uh, you you write it on the blog post and that's great i, I think i i uh, also watch your turkish version like the pagination pages and yeah. also so creative uh, creative uh, ideas you shared that but maybe you can record this uh, english version and you know? attach, it, <laughs> attach it to your article yeah embed it to your article yeah yeah you know? so true yeah thanks guys uh, we don't have much time because we uh, also bisha will share with you something adam will share with you something but if you want to do like a hangout or if you want to ask me something you can uh, drop them like right here in the chat box or in type form which we'll add or directly on Twitter so I am there also thank you very all much all right it's my turn so um, this week not this week actually a few weeks ago I met a really um, I met with a really good newsletter called women in tech SEO newsletter and I really loved it because all of the contributors, most of the contributors are women. And you know, male dominancy is a really bad thing in the SEO industry. I know you guys like are treating me like a queen. I don't feel that in this theme, but there's a really big dominancy in terms of gender. So I really felt really happy to be, a, be to be able to be a part of this, to be to read that newsletter it's so it was so um exact i was so excited it was so exciting for me and last week uh i just we just saw that we together uh their virtual fest three-day event with a lot yeah. of women speakers insightful amazing women including Aleida solis um of course there will be this is only open to women by the way men cannot enter this is a really special and exclusive <laughs> event but i'm really happy because i met a lot of women i'm i'm so happy because i'm not alone in this industry there are a lot of other successful women women content marketers seos tech seos content seos etc it keeps on getting longer and longer but i met a lot of women this week i met like 40 women we had some chat about this virtual fest. We talked about, we tweeted about something. We're sharing our experience, and it's really, really good. It's I don't, I can't tell it, but to be able to speak with a woman in this industry is a really good thing. So the next week there will be events. I've just left the link below. You can just woman as yours, of course. You can just uh, go there and uh, get your ticket from there because men are, I know men are trying to buy some tickets, but they were declining them. I saw the tweet about it. So that's why I'm talking about only women as you. I, I, that's why I'm saying only women as you. <laughs> I'm <fun>. so genius. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the amazing news of this week. And it's, it, it was really inspirational for me. And I decided to do something about it in my next life. Bishra, congratulations, and really, you deserve that. I hope one day, I hope one day, I will be a contributor as a speaker too. It's a really new uh, event, but I hope it. I will be, I will be inspirational as I want to be as inspirational as that uh, speakers that in the next week. But I will manage it. It's my new mojo, no, not mojo. It's my new target for this year. So I got inspirational and I decided to sit down and write all about, about all of the stuff I talked in the last week SEO series about how to make competitive keyword analysis. And I'm also giving some free and paid tools and free tricks to make competitive analysis in Google. And you can use them to create contents, make a content, create a content strategy or make a basic keyword research hi carol by the way and you can use it just i'm leaving the link below you can free to read it and you can also send me a message from linkedin or twitter you're free to ask anything you want 
I'm open to um, feedback. I would love to hear your opinions. Are you ready for damages? Um, <laughs> actually, uh, okay, I got inspiration and wrote this, but these are safe methods, tricky but safe methods to use. I don't think they will damage it, but they can say, okay, everyone's, okay, this person has also talked about this and blah, blah, blah. Negative criticism is everywhere, Roman, but please don't forget that most of the time people criticize you badly, not because you're really bad, but because they don't do anything in their life. That's why they feel a gap about it. But I'm not talking about people criticizing and giving feedback about your article, by the way. It's there out of this comment. But there are people like that, toxic people. Okay, um, bye. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you know, everyone knows this. Uh, Google may see web pages as duplicates if URLs are too similar. I'm putting this he here because it was asked during the last weekend, last week's um, Google SEO session, live session. And this was a question asked to John Miller why they are doing this. And he just answered that the Google is um, crawling pages in a broader perspective and a specific, much um, thinner, uh, not thinner. Oh, I got forgot the word. In a broader perspective and a small and a smaller perspective. And in the smaller version, they in the closer version, they enter to the website and look at the content and whether they are duplicate. Check, check whether they are duplicate or not. But this URL thing is a broader. Um, perception and they are doing this to uh, save their crawl um, their sources to crawl many more websites because they have limited sources to do it because there are a lot of websites and that's why they are doing that and um, it, it, it's interesting I guess because I'm always thought um, I always think about this uh, there are a lot of clients coming and ask us about their um, category branches their URLs and some of them are really similar and most of the time they cannot get the traffic they desired and we are trying to make them as different as as much as possible in order to, because they don't want to change their url structures but they're also talking in the session they are talk, uh, talking about this in the session and they're also saying that okay if you don't change the url structures we should be um as much different as possible in the meta titles, meta descriptions, uh, the heading structure and content in, on our pages, we should be unique. And uh, if you are doing something new, if you want to exper experiment something new, we can always try to change the URL structures, but the tricky part is it may be risky if you, don't, if you do it in the wrong time because of the yeah. seasonal effect of your work or industry. So you need to be careful about it. If you have an idea about it, um, you should wait for the off season, I guess. Every brand has a, ho has a off season, I guess. Most you like brand. challenges, Bishra. You like challenges. I know that. What? You like challenges. Yeah, I know. We try this most of the time. I don't like... Um, I, I like challenges, but I love the logical ones, the exciting ones. <laughs> so this this is an, another interesting topic I came across uh, while I was uh, going and um, checking for what's new in Search Engine Journal. I just saw this uh, title SEO for journalists. We always talk about uh, in newspapers there it's hard to write something evergreen, so it's hard to hard to be an SEO in the newspaper industry, news industry, or news websites. And this guy, um, the writer is talking about um, what should journalists do. But here the journalist part is the part people writing this stuff and uploading them to the internet. So the actual this article is really good and it says that okay there are SEOs, SEO executives or managers, and they can tell us what to do about it. But if you're an online, co online, online content writer, at least you should know a few basic things for the health of your website or, or the, for the health of the thing you write about, because you put some effort in it. 
and after you publish it, if it won't get traffic, there will be no meaning and all of your efforts efforts will be in vain. So uh, we should be careful. Online writers should be careful about some stuff. It was he was um, driver was talking about really basic stuff, like what keywords will people ideal people ideally type into find this article. We are we have this kind of um, talk most of the time with you when we write new blog posts. We are talking about, about it. Okay how people can search for it. We are trying to write something unique. How can people organically find this in the search results? And of course, meta tags, are, are your meta tags um, okay? They are readable or your UX structure of your page. It, it's not the writer part, I guess, but your headlines are good. Is your summary good? Are you, read, uh, are you writing readable stuff? That kind of thing. I just left the link below. Link below. And you can check it. I know it's so hard to make SEO for uh, newspaper websites, news websites, but yeah. everyone should take some responsibility to have a better traffic, I guess, in that kind of organizations because there are a lot of stuff published daily. And one person for one person, it's impossible. Most of the time, it's impossible to have in control all over them. Exactly. So this week, uh, SEMrush again, I love SEMrush. And it is, this is not a sponsored comment, by the way. And they published a really good research about mobile versus desktop uh, traffic and visibility metrics. And this one is really interesting. It, uh, sh this was showing the domains, number of the domains or the per percent of the domains change their positions in the mobile search results compared to the um, desktop results. And have you seen this? Can you see those numbers? Only 70% of, of the websites keep the same position in both in mobile and desktop results. Yep. And, and we should, we can think that they're lucky enough to uh, optimize their <laughs> websites in, in, the, in mind of, in perspective of mobile first indexing. Uh, USA, <laughs> it's very competitive uh, like country because there is a lot of e-commerce websites there is a lot of pages there is millions uh, of pages that is in a really huge competition and maybe that's why there is uh, a little bit updates on the ranking so every day they have like in in one day there's maybe one or two algorithm updates which is not announced by Google. So maybe that's why Samra shared that data on mobile versus desktop. By the way, they are adding also this, but I didn't put it in this uh, slide. Of mm -hmm. course, there are some websites, they have different versions, mobile versions and desktop versions, and they may be, uh, they may be out of this link, most of the, uh, this evaluation for most of this stuff. And the, Critical part is here, I guess. Uh, okay, we see customers telling, there are still people telling that, okay, as long as desktop is okay, my desktop performance is okay, everything will be good for me. I don't care about mobile because um, I get my most of my traffic from desktop, desktop devices, computers. Yep. But it's not the case. Even Google says this. Even when you enter in Google Search Console, Google Search Console say this. So you, your website should be indexable and usable in mobile search results. So we should be careful about it. So some people also say that, what if I don't care whether I, I will be in the first section or the second, row, uh, second ranking in the mobile, but you should be because there is limited space in mobile search results and mm -hmm. when you it's so different when you're at the top or in the third ranking so it, this will change everything people won't see you most of the time because they will just put their um, put their interest here and click here or tap here i don't know what they're using in their homes but we should be careful about mobile indexing and rankings i guess and it will be more um, important in the few next months after page are, page experience algorithm update also. They're not saying that it will be a direct page ranking thing, but I don't believe it. 
it will indir indirectly be effective, I yeah. guess. There was a, a funny image about uh, that kind of thing. If you are in page two of Google, it's like you are not existed in this world. How, you are how in the graveyard. People think that if you're in the second page of Google search results, you're in the graveyard. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this is an, another interesting metric from that, the same uh, research on SEMrush. Um, this is interesting because it shows SERP, injures, SERP features frequency of appearance on mobile and desktop. So the most interesting thing here is imagine organic results for me, 12.5 uh, times more on the mobile, it says. I wouldn't think that people search for, um, people will, one day I will open my mobile search results and I will uh, get to see more and more pictures in the organic results because there is limited space, but it's not the case. There is a lot of um, picture. For example, if you are looking for recipes, you see them a lot if they have recipe structured data. Mm -hmm. And another interesting thing is for me, people also ask section almost equal on mobile and desktop because mm -hmm. I wouldn't think I wouldn't think that it will be equal in mobile because it also takes some space. So I never thought about this and it was really insightful for me. I never thought about the SERP features here, the listings here. So you can check the article, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Also, right now we have, it's not a, uh, one thing which is new, but right now we have an update on Google's UI when you search for a uh, like video based keywords like when you will search for weekly seo on google you will see there a really big section of videos and under the videos it's on desktop by the way you will see time snaps so actually it wasn't visible uh, since now since this week or previous week uh, it was visible on some just some of videos on desktop uh, maybe it was uh, google tested it with some of people. Uh, but right now we can see like a really big section of videos and under the videos time snaps. Uh, on Google uh, mobile, we already see that a lot of time, for a lot of time. So thank for listening to me. It was really uh, good That's, for me to talk. I missed yeah. this. Me too. That's good data, so you know it was uh, insightful for a mobile site. And thank uh, you for the and, and you I know, must say thank you to Samrush, I guess. Sorry to add. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, uh, you know we we didn't celebrate Women's Days because we are uh, wow. the Leo uh, on the on the Friday, so. Happy Women's Day, and uh, for especially for you, Queen. <laughs> Thank you. And so, uh, I recently dived into a sitemap uh, of a like we had a customer, like not customer, like cl client, uh, like made a website where a retail company uh, produces content, and uh, as you know, uh, before it's a huge sitemap. We, we had this case this week <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I noticed that like there are many uh, many difficulties like uh, in terms of navigation like some pages uh, were created as uh, subfolders and uh, and some some of them is not and uh, it was formed with a kind of flat uh, hierarchy and uh, af after a certain date, and uh, when I contacted, like, conducted uh, a research about this, I had the chance to uh, watch John Miller's uh, this Google Office Hours in January. I found this uh, video, and uh, it, it was actually about that, like, pyramid or flat navigate structure is uh, useful for our website and useful for Google Google Boss, and. Uh, in, in in fact, the depth uh, the depth of the pages perceives uh, like the importance of the page. 
by searching by searching an engine bots like Google bots or Bing bots. And you know, therefore, some websites create a fake let navigate structure. You know, if you are if you have a recipe, you can uh, you can put it like a food subfolder. But the the main categories is this kind of uh, issue in the Google site. The main category is sometimes is more powerful because it's the main category, and uh, then people and the the B creating a uh, structure. Just they are putting um, uh, any, any subcategory and, and like, uh, thousands and thousands of URLs without any subcategory and integer Google bots and the. Uh, the, another maybe another search engine boss cannot uh, you know it's not meaningful and uh, they cannot uh, understand your navigate structure that sometimes is problem and uh, and as you know it's also there's a whole budget here and uh, you need to use it uh, so useful and uh, as Miller mentioned about that uh, if you wanna your website better understood. The pyramid uh, method will be will be more effective and uh, for for uh, any search engine bot, than especially for Google bot. And in fact, with this structure, Google bots can easily make sense of the link uh, between uh, higher category, like top category, and the subcategory. That's uh, so. Please don't make a like uh, fake flat navigate structure. This pyramid structure is always useful and lots of websites is using that it's not like uh, okay i can be i, I want to be you know but okay if you are seos you need to try something but sometimes uh, you need to obey the rules and navigate like uh, pyramid structure is the useful one yeah what did yeah. you learn from that big website adam other things <laughs> did you learn any other interesting uh, things? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a long story, I think. <laughs> I'm just making a joke. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> and uh, the face piece of uh, our websites uh, via Search Console, uh, metrics such as like LCP, uh, such as FID, CLS, like, you know, uh, okay, we, we talk about that uh, so much and uh, like, Presented to us in the search console, like with field data in the search console, and uh, I also uh, watched this uh, another uh, the Google Office Hours is in the March is the, the last one, and uh, like in in other words, uh, they are not like lab data, you know, that's like coming from users uh, Chrome, uh, how can I say like Chrome user experience data from your users. And uh, if we made a change sometimes, like I saw a problem here, I wanna change it. And sometimes it doesn't uh, reflect your uh, your field data in the in the uh, search console. So here any uh, acceler acceleration updates, et cetera. And uh, will not, as I said, it will not happen in your, uh, Search console because this data is collected uh, over 28 days and of uh, Chrome user experience data from your users and uh, they are visiting your website and uh, this data presented uh, presented to us as an average. Because of the system flow. Is there a problem in so my internet? Because I can't hear you. Sorry, guys. Can you hear I me? Interrupt. Yeah, no. we hear. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. And uh, as Müller uh, mentioned about that, this process is not because uh, the system is low. It's because uh, it's the information uh, gathering phase, you know? because you need the time to just uh, gather this uh, data. So how can we measure if we change anything on our website? For this, we can like recheck, re uh, recheck it with the uh, lab data and know that if there is any improvement in the lab data, 
probably it will affect your field data as well. And we can change something. We can optimize our website. In the, you know, if any any opportunity optimization, we can do it and we can wait it. But if we don't want to wait it, like we can check it is uh, lab data, then we can uh, also check another time in the Core Web Vitals in the Search Console. Yeah. Don't let people to manipulate you, by the way, Adam. Your internet connection is great. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't hear me. Yeah, we hear you, Adam. I couldn't so, hear you for a few seconds, and I just thought that. That's why. She lies, Adam. <laughs> so you just <laughs> celebrated my Women's Day, and you called oh, me online. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so which version is the uh, internet explorer is this yeah you are coming from so late you know okay uh really if if any problem in my internet i can you know everything's connect. good Adam. everything's all good so on the mobile side uh if our largest contentful paint metric performs uh more than uh four seconds it's considered that it's really bad, you know. It's not really bad, but you can optimize it. And uh, hero image uh, lost in just uh, two, uh, two point, like not two point, like four point five seconds here, on on our website. And uh, as can be understood uh, from GIF, there is a waiting period of two uh, two point five uh, seconds to upload our photo. And this photo of ours uh, is on a slide, slide section on our website. And uh, in order to reduce this uh, to, to uh, 0.5 seconds time as much as possible, we need to load our image before the elements, uh, elements running in the other background site and also uh, the sub pages of our mobile site. So uh, that's why why our hero element, like hero image is very important here because the user can leave uh, your website directly due to the slow uh, loading and the bounce rate may increase here. But hero image is actually uh, the main element that makes uh, this website uh, like feel loaded and uh, interact with the user also. Like you are taking your uh, the mobile phone and if you don't see any images here, Okay, guys. Like that's this website is really, really is uh, really slow. But if you saw this uh, image here, maybe your another uh, background uh, sources is huge and loading so slow. But that's a good signal for you. I feel like a cat. It's a really interesting gift. <laughs> Adam, it's really very useful tip, by the way. Even I could use that in my personal website because I have a trouble there about that. Hero <laughs> images, hero slide. There is a slider with five posts. And every time Google page speed inside, see there is a lot of problems with that. So I need to I need to implement that tip, by the way. Thanks. I'm Welcome. gonna and I want you to use that trick for next week, Adam, for another brand. <laughs> Let's yeah. test that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's test it. Yeah, I, I'm serious. Let's test it. And uh, this, you know, this is a slide section. Uh, we can just preload our uh, the first photo. You know, it's uh, because that's uh, other uh, point. Just you don't need to preload every images on your slide section. Okay, uh, if you're a large website. And while checking while checking your Core Web Vitals uh, performance on Search Console, you can see uh, the which my pages is uh, to perform very poorly, and uh, in this certain. But you can crawl uh, you crawl them by one in PageSpeed Insight. Like you can uh, click it and uh, probably redirect to the PageSpeed Insight. And you don't want to do it like uh, by one by one. Oh my God, I can't speak. Buy one, buy. And uh, you need to you need to also uh, create uh, here like a strategy for this. You can uh, 
find this uh, website, these are web pages, and uh, collect them, and we can use uh, basic inside API on Screaming Frog, and we can uh, crawl them. Then, uh, and uh, you can see what exactly uh, optimizations I can do with these uh, web pages. And this is unlikely uh, for a large website. And you need to create a specific specific uh, plan for the optimization process, and you will you will want to see which pages our optimizations uh, have affected. And therefore, uh, using the pace speed uh, inside API, um, we can group which pages uh, will affect the optimizations, and we will perform through Screaming Frog. And we can also filter, and you know you can see here the potential uh, seconds. You can, yeah, here, guys. <laughs> you can see uh, your potential seconds, and you can filter that which uh, optimization will affect and which your page. And uh, you can filter that, and you can uh, prioritize, and uh, you can optimize these pages firstly, and you can make this plan generally, like you by using Screaming Frog with uh, PageSpeed Inside API. Mm -hmm. Screaming Frog is your spider. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on. Screaming Frog is your spider, not Screaming Frog. There's no Screaming Frog, guys. OK, uh, spoiler alert, because uh, we talk about uh, we talked about many times the, that websites in the news and media category area performed uh, very poorly in the CLS metric. And for this, in my uh, blog post, I selected uh, the most traffic news media website of many countries, like as you see here, like Turkey, Spain, France, Poland, these uh, the countries. And uh, I select the most traffic in these countries, which website is uh, news and media category, and uh, the most uh, like uh has performance and but the critical point in that uh, some news sites are very official and uh do not contain ads and uh, <clears throat> because the most influencing factor in cls metric is the advertising uh, spaces is uh, really killing your cls score and generally speaking uh, these news and the media sites are uh, all over the world failed and uh, in fact the SEOs of this website can make a difference maybe and uh, in this area and increase their performance because that's that's really really good opportunity for them after uh, after this uh, update has come and you know you have an opportunity here and you can optimize maybe your sales because you are uh, you have a competition between this news and media and uh, all all websites has this uh, problem. And I will share all detail my next blog post the next week. And uh, I will have more data. I will uh, type more data here. Maybe it's a Euro, European countries like South American. And this is all uh, data. I will share it the next week. Thank you guys for listening to me. I hope my connection is good. Everything is good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adam, when you speak really fast, like 50 cents, your internet can't catch you because you're speaking fast. You are like a rapper. But when you speak like slowly in that way... Oh, my God. Okay. So, internet, it's really great. So, okay. guys, I can, I, can, uh, I can talk all my, uh, you know, these sessions again. Do you, do you want it like with slow, slow? Yeah, thing? it might be a little slow, you know, like, <laughs> like that. Okay, so thank you for that, for your contribution also. Um, to all of the attendees in here. And if you want to ask us anything, we will add that type form long URL into the description section. So you can click there then after this live session. I think in a few hours, you will see that link there. But if you want to write it manually, you can find this from here. We also have a landing page. We will leave it there. You can just go and check it out. 
Great idea. So you're a PR specialist right now. <laughs> <laughs> you are that one. You started this firing. <laughs> okay. What about me? Ask us anything you want to have an answer about your situation. Thank you very much for listening us. Um, if you want to support us, some help, you can share that video on your social media account. And thank you for being with us. You are out of this, this world. Have a great weekend ahead. Bye-bye. <laughs>